Dear people watching and listening, Assalamu alaikum. Kindly like and share this video with your friends and family and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Kindly support me through my Patreon so that I can keep making such videos. Start of Chapter 3 The Bible, an Anthology on Incest A kind reminder that the link to the combat kit is in the description below. The reader is naturally shocked to find such a heading in a book attributed to God. One has to read it to believe it. Quickly, the reader refers to page 13 to savor the spiciest part of combat kit. First, at the head of the page is the definition from the New Collins Dictionary. Incest. Sexual intercourse between two persons who are too closely related. The Oxford Dictionary adds the words to marry. Whilst in the middle of this research, I was visited by two Bible peddlers on a Sunday morning at home. They came to give me solutions to the problems of the world from the Holy Bible. I changed the subject and I suggested to them that I was on the verge of writing an anthology on incest. I asked whether they knew the meaning of the word incest. They said that they knew. I explained the meaning to them. It was about having sexual intercourse between father and daughters, between son and mother, between father-in-law and daughter-in-law, between brother and sister. I asked them, what would they say if, on completion of my essay on the subject, I presented it to their teenager sister or daughter to read? They both replied to the effect that they would strangle me. I asked why. They said that that act of my giving a filthy, dirty, immoral book to their loved ones was an attack on their chastity. I said, I would not blame them for their strong reaction. But what if the obscene, immoral treatise on incest was derived from your so-called Book of God, the Holy Bible? Impossible, they exclaimed indignantly. The Bible contains no such pornography. Prove it, they demanded. I asked, the volume you are holding in your hands, is it the Bible? The Bible thumpers, the hot gospelers always carry one under their arm. Yes, was the answer. Can I have a look? It was handed to me. I opened it to Genesis chapter 19 and pointing to verse 30. I asked one of them to read. The Bible peddler scanned the verses and smelt the rat. He wanted to change the subject. I asked, what's wrong? Is that not the word of God? Yes, they blurted. But, but, but when persuaded, what did the Christian read? See pages 14 and 15 for the actual reproduction from the Holy of Holies. Both the reproductions are from the King James Version. You will observe that there are slight variations between them. In verse 32, the first version speaks of the daughters of Lot wanting to preserve seed of our father, whereas the second records as preserve lineage of our father. But the more modern translations of the Bible call a spade a spade. They do not mince matters. That night they, both the daughters of Lot, gave him their father Lot wine to drink and the older daughter had intercourse with him. The next day the older daughter said to her sister, I slept with him last night. Now let's get him drunk again tonight and you sleep with him. Then each of us will have a child by our father. So that night they got him drunk and the younger daughter had intercourse with him. In this way, both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. Holy Bible, Genesis, chapter 19 verses 33 to 35, from the Good News Bible in today's English. As a result of this illicit, incestuous relationship, both of the daughters of Lot delivered a son each who became famous in the Bible as the progenitors of the Ammonites and the Moabites.
specially guarded and protected communities in the Book of God. The Jews were to exterminate the Palestinians, nothing that breeds was to be spared. But for Lord's children of bastardy, God had a special soft spot. That the Lord spoke to me, Moses, saying, This day you, the Israelites, are to cross over at Ur, the boundary of Moab, the Moabites. And when you come near the people of Ammon, the Ammonites, do not harass them or meddle with them. For I will not give you any of the land of the people of Ammon as a possession, because I have given it to the descendants of Lot for a possession. Holy Bible, Deuteronomy, chapter 2, verse 19. The Ammonites and the Moabites were not one whit better than their polytheistic Palestinian cousins. Their only redeeming grace in the sight of the biblical God was that they were the seed of Lot, an incestuous breed. Ask your Bible temper, what is the moral, the lesson to be learned from this shameless lewd story? If there is no moral and there is none, then why did God not reproach Lot or strike him with syphilis, gonorrhea or AIDS? But instead, his offsprings were a blessed race in God's sight. How immorally moral or morally immoral can you get? Psychologist confirms. Dr. Vernon Jones, an American psychologist of great repute, carried out experiments on groups of school children of equal age and educational status. Certain stories with particular bias were told to the children. His conclusions were that these stories made certain slight but permanent changes in the character of these children, even in the narrow classroom situation. Little wonder that the mighty evangelist Jimmy Swaggart, in his book on incest, bewails that incest between fathers and their daughters have reached endemic proportion in the mighty United States of America. There is a law at work. Physically, you are what you eat, and morally and mentally, you are what you read. Before proceeding further, open your Bible at Genesis chapter 19 at verses 30 to 36, and write across the top on two pages in big, bold handwriting, incest between father and daughters, and underline it. At the bottom of these very two pages, write in equally bold types, the next reference on the topic, incest between mother and son. Find the next reference in your own Bible, Genesis chapter 35, verse 32. Having opened Genesis 35, frame verse 22 and write as a heading across the two pages in bold, incest between son and mother, and underline. At the bottom of the set pages, write incest between father-in-law and daughter-in-law. Find Genesis chapter 38, verses 15 to 18, and repeat the exercise of supplying the page number and framing the verses as you had done in the previous two examples. And get back to your combat kit, pages 13 and 14. And complete the exercise of marking your Bible to confront every Christian crusader who knocks on your door. The better your preparation, the swifter will be the flight of the Bible peddler. Glance once more at the previous two pages, 18 and 19, and their heading, incest between son and his mother. Read verse 22 there. Both the reproductions are from the most renowned King James Version. The larger types are from the KJV in its fifth major revision, after revising the book five times over. The Christians still call it the King James Version. Compare the two reproductions of this one verse 22. They begin, and it came to pass, and, and so it happened. The Christians have not yet freed themselves from the once upon a time syndrome. Modern translations more explicit. Both the quotations speak of Reuben went and lay with Bilhah. The Roman Catholic's Due version differs in its choice of words. It says Reuben went and slept with Bala. They meant Bilhah. Now these variant readings do not tell us how old Reuben was. 
No one would raise eyebrows if a five-year-old or ten-year-old kid sleeps with his mother or his stepmother to keep himself warm. The New Century Version, in its International Children's Bible, published by Word Bibles of Word UK Limited, Milton Keynes, England, does not want Christian children to fumble over the meaning of lay or slept. They even got their Bible thumpers out of their misery of explaining away simple words lending themselves to dubious interpretations. Their rendering is, Reuben had sexual relations with Israel's slave woman Bilha. Could they have spelt it out in any simpler form for the born against, who will never grow up? Of the twelve sons of Jacob, Reuben was the firstborn, the eldest son, who in the prime of his life raped his mother. Call a slave woman or concubine, she was his father's wife, and your father's wife is one's mother by any definition. Wife and concubine are synonymous terms in the Bible. Check it out in your own Bible at home. A. Abraham again took a wife, and her name was Katura. Holy Bible, Genesis, chapter 25, verse 1. Genesis is reputed to be the first book of Moses, alayhi salam. God Almighty himself is supposed to have dictated the five books of the Jewish Torah, now accepted by all Christians as God's word. In the first of these five books, God Almighty spells it out for Moses that the third wife of his friend, Abraham salam, was Keturah, the previous two being Sarah and Hagar. If the Lord God of Moses himself acknowledges Keturah as Abraham's wife, then who can have the audacity to contradict him and denigrate Keturah? But some unknown anonymous writer of the first book of Chronicles, chapter 1, verse 32, had the nerve to change God's word dictated to Moses from wife to concubine, unless they mean the same thing. Otherwise, the Bible Tampa will have to acknowledge that there is yet another contradiction in his Bible. Look in the index of your combat kit for contradictions in the Bible and add this item also to your list. Reverting to the subject marked at the bottom on pages 18 and 19, that is incest between father-in-law and daughter-in-law, after having completed the exercise as instructed on page 17, that of framing verses 15 to 18 of Genesis chapter 38. This chapter 38 is very effective also in proving that Bible is not the word of God. End of chapter 3